Okay, guys, just going to do a quick video on a really quick oil change on my other 125 pit bike. This is running a little Life Band 125 Chinese type uh, four stroke, so really, really quick. Now, uh, first thing to do is just warm it up, so kill switch off, and we'll just give it a quick kick here. Hopefully, it should fire up. Okay, let's start it. Yep. Then it was 30 seconds, but I had started out previously, so you just want to get it warm. Um, so, probably three, four, or five minutes, and then all you're going to need is a container to catch the oil in. So, it takes about a litre of oil, so you need something at least a litre. Um, uh, I'm using a uh, 17 mil socket here, and I've got a funnel to fill it up, and then a, uh, I've got the replacement oil here. Uh, so, um, the reason we warm it up is just to uh, ensure that all the contaminants get suspended in the oil so when we drain it they drain out with the oil um, now next thing I'm going to do is loosen off the um, oil filler cap here what that does is because when you drain it it's going to try to suck air through if this is sealed then it will be a lot slower to drain so just going to not take it all the way out but just crack it open so that there's an air gap there okay now what you're going to do is come down underneath and you see mine's got a bash plate there. Um, it's, it sits in here, underneath it. And there's a hole in it here. And in there is a the 17 mil uh, bolt that we're going to remove. So that's uh, this bolt in, in here. Okay, so, um, yep. So we're just gonna put our oil container under there. Now I'll just clean the carby out. Might do another video on that next time, and so let's go a bit of oil, uh, fuel in there. That's not too bad. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get uh, that located underneath the drain plug there. Um, well, first of all, got to get enough clearance to get this socket in here. Sorry guys, just trying to do this sort of one-handed. Yep. So lefty loosey, righty tidy. Just going to crack that. Shouldn't be too tight. Yeah, just so it's cracked, I'm going to locate my oil pan, or drain, sorry, uh, catch or container under there, and just try to undo this. Be careful because it can be warm, uh, so you could, you do potentially want to wear gloves here, or uh, I sometimes hold a rag um, just to stop the splash, but I'm in a little bit of a rush today, so I'm just gonna... you also want to be careful with the you, when you take this out, you get the if there's a crush washer on it, that you collect that with it. Because if you drop it into the oil pan, then you got to go fishing it out. Okay, so that should drain out. And really, you want to have a bit of a look at the oil quality that's coming out of it, because um, this will determine how, um, I guess, how often you've changed oil, how hard the engine's been running. So if it's really dark, there's a lot of contaminant contaminants. If it's nice, clear, sort of a, a treacle, golden syrup, honey sort of colour, that's pretty good. This one, um, I actually probably haven't ridden this bike in about a year, so it's quite dark, which is just the oil and contaminants reaching into the engine. Um, uh, so that's normal, but um, not great. So anything over, over six months, I'd suggest draining it if it's been sitting. So I'm about to take this out for a ride tomorrow, so I'm draining that now. So um, the other thing to note is, it's a good uh, indicator of if someone's had the bike before you, how well they've maintained it, how good this condition the oil is in. Um, if it's really dark, black, tarry, thick, um, then it's really not probably been changed that often or, or the bike's been, has some, potentially has a lot of contaminants in the oil. Um, and that's not a great um, indicator because then if you get that into your valves and um, obviously, all your bearings and whatnot is, is really not getting lubricated well. So 
Um, ideally, you try and want to let this drain, kind of want to let this drain as long as uh, potentially possible. Um, the other thing you'll get is from draining it is that um, you get an idea of how much to put back in if you're the last one to fill it, because obviously if you weren't the last one to fill it, they may have put the wrong amount in. But um, the other thing to look up is in terms of quantities is the uh, manufacturer's uh, website or um, uh, just do a Google search on the forums or um, also you can, um, if you've got a, a handbook or an owner's handbook and that will sometimes indicate it. And also sometimes on the engine cases themselves or near the filler cap, it'll also have a good um, a, a level or a guide there as to how much is gonna go back into it. Also can vary with some engines depending on if you're doing a filter or not. If you're doing a filter, then you can potentially need to add more oil because there is some more oil kept in that reservoir or, or in the filter itself. Um, there is actually a gauze filter in these. I'm not going to clean out this right. I did it last time. Um, it involves taking one of the side covers off to get to it and then it's just a little screen filter. Uh, there's no cartridge type filter like some other bikes on these. Um, okay, so that's pretty much drain. It's sort of just um, dripping now, so that's good. The other thing you can do is have a look at the, um, the top of your uh, oil sump plug. Um, just to see if there's any debris in there or any um, metal shavings or grayness in there because if there is that's a indicator there's some wear occurring and um, it's not a good sign and then you, you may need to consider um, where that where that uh, metal is coming from essentially so mine looks clear which is good um, it's not a magnetic one the magnetic ones are even better because they do probably capture a lot more of, of what would be in there so I'm just going to give that a quick wipe down excuse mess of the garage but I generally like to wipe these down too because you're going to get um, potentially some debris in there um, from the engine but also you're going to want to clear any grit that's in that thread so that you're not going to uh, potentially cross thread it there um, so yeah just going to give that a quick wipe down with a rag I'll take that I should take that rag with me it's not a bad idea to keep a rag on hand because you never know if you're going to spill some oil here uh, I'm just going to give the bike a little bit of a rock backwards and forwards just to because sometimes that oil can sort of sit in different parts of the engine and you want to try to get out as much as you can. There you go. Just lean it to the side and you can see there's a bit more sort of draining. I mean, it should realistically be the lowest part, that sump plug in the engine. So you sh shouldn't have to do this, but um, obviously that oil can get stuck in different parts within that sump. So you really... Um, ideally you want to get as much of that old oil out as, as um, possible but also got to be depends how um, uh, I guess depends at just how difficult you want to be about or how much time you've got um, so yeah I'm pretty happy with that I can see I've got about a liter out of it which is what I um, kind of looked up and saw that, that it should have um, so that's good Okay, so now what I'm just going to do is put that drain plug back in. Now, um, I tend to just give a little wipe around the surface of the mating surface of where that bolt's going to go back into, just to clear any debris because we don't really want to leak there. Also good if there's some sort of a washer you're using that has a sump washer on that, a crush washer, you want to just check the condition of that because ideally um, you don't want any, uh, any leaks here. Okay, so now I'm just screwing that back in. Just with my finger here, don't really want to use the impact or anything because you don't want to strip that thread and you want to feel it um, with your fingers uh, going back in easily because you do not want to cross thread this or you're going to have to re-tap it and um, it's going to cause a lot of pain uh, later. So, um, so I'm just going to, then once I've sort of done it up finger tight and I'm happy that it's gone in, threaded in wrong uh, the right way, then I'm just going to get the um, socket back on it and i'm just going to snug that with one hand i like to do them one hand because then you, it's really hard to sort of strip them but should also be giving them the correct tension that they'll to seal that bolt okay so that's done now we're going to go on to the filler cap so when you take the filler um, out in this bike it's right um, next to the kickstarter here at the top um, you want to try to keep that clean um, and also you want to um, be careful of the surface around that because that can get contaminants stuck to it from dirt and whatnot and you don't want those going in so try to avoid them getting into the engine where you can 
Um, and then what you want to do is get a, um, a funnel. Sometimes you'll get an oil, you may get um, an oil, the oil container from the shop might have an extendable funnel on. Um, but in my case, uh, I've just got this on there. Now, again, you want to check your manufacturer's website or the, um, uh, or do a Google or, or a, um, if that'll focus, do a bit of a Google um, to determine what type of engine oil you're running. I think these generally want about 10 watt 40. So I'm getting close here, 15 watt 50. I'm in Australia, so a little bit warmer. It's not bad, too bad for, I've run this active 14 a lot of bikes before, never had any problems with it. You can see there's, well, I've got about a litre left in this. And most of them tend to have an indicator on the side here. The other thing I like to do is write uh, if I have used some of it, make sure you're right if it is new or used oil. No, I'm putting obviously used oil back in, so um, yeah. I've, luckily enough, I've pretty much got bang on a litre left, which is great. So um, that's what the engine calls for. That's how much I can see is coming out as a two litre container. So, um, so yeah, so from here, really, it's just a matter of pouring um, your oil in. So uh, the other thing you want to do as you pour this in is just go slow because you might get an air bubble, especially if it's a filter, uh, sorry, using a funnel like I am, and then you could have it back, back flow and splash over. So the other thing you wanna do is look, um, I've had this happen before, is just look that and make sure you put the sump plug back on. Because if you get caught up and you have to come back to it, if you get to put that back on, you're pouring expensive oil all over the ground and it's not a fun position to be in. You to, not only do you have to clean it up, but um, if you're unlucky enough to not have any spare oil, you've got to go and get more oil. So, um, yeah, so here I'm just, just going slow, um, just so that I don't get any, um, if there is air trapped in there, it doesn't cause a bubble and backflow into over the funnel. Yeah, so this is a bit boring, but you'll get the picture. So, um, if you, uh, if you want to do, you want to check your container, uh, levels every now and again as if you're not putting exactly what's in the container so if you had a say a four liter and the engine's only calling for a liter then just want to stop and check that put it on level surface and check that um how much you poured in there but because i know i've got exactly a liter left in this container that's why i'm just pouring away without actually checking out but generally when i do it i go back and check how much i've poured out because you don't want to overfill it obviously or or in fact underfill it um, now because this is a uh, wet sump um, that means all the oil here I'm pouring into the crankcase is going directly into the sump um, some bikes like um, YZ250 over there it actually has a, all the oils being carried in the um, or has a lot that's carried in the frame so that um, really makes a difference when you come to check the oil there's a different procedure depending on if it's a um, yeah, if it's got oil in the frame or not. So with this one, it's quite easy. Um, so essentially, I'm just trying to get as much of this in there as I can because I know it needs a litre. And I've got a litre in this container, so not going to be too pedantic about it, but that'll do. Okay, and then I'm just going to give my dipstick a bit of a wipe down on this old rag before I sort of put it in. Um... Two, and then just pop that back into the. Now, because it's, I've wiped it before I put it back in, whatever the reading I get now is exactly what's in there. It's not what was remaining on the stick. If you don't wipe it, then um, yeah, you won't get an accurate level. Okay, so um, it's had enough time. Thankfully, it's only a shallow engine, so there's a fair enough time for that to get back into the sump now to fill it up enough for the oil pickup um, to collect it. So um, this is really a personal choice from this bit, but I tend to, most bikes is just give it a, hit the kill switch. So that's no ignition to the engine. Um, still got the fuel, didn't leave the fuel on or off, I left it on, that's okay. And then what I tend to do is just give it a few dry kicks. So no ignition. And really what I'm just trying to do is circle some oil through the pump, um, through the pickup, and making sure the first time it starts with a little bit higher RPM and obviously I'm kicking it, 
it's going to get enough lubrication in here. Okay, that should be enough. So um, now I'm just going to hit the kill switch to have it fire it up. And then try to start it. Sorry, what I was doing sort of one handed. give it um, some time now for that engine that oil to drain back into the sump and then give it a check but you should be able to give it a check now at this point just to make sure there's a reasonable amount and then what I would do and what I will do in this instance is let the engine uh, sit overnight uh, so I'm just gonna wipe that down. sit overnight and then come back and check the um, oil dipstick again at that point just to see that I have got the correct level of oil in it. Um, that way, overnight, it's obviously given time for that oil to all drain back into the sump. Um, so we'll just have a quick look, make sure it's, it is at least, I'm sure you can see that, but yeah, it's definitely registering oil on the dipstick, nearly full. So um, yeah, that's it guys. Um, pretty quick and simple, good clean oil is a happy engine. So um, I, in terms of timing and how often you do that, well, really depends on how hard you run the engine and, and um, how often you ride but um, obviously a bike such as the Wiser 250 probably every six hours a bike like this it's less high rev engine but depends on how hard you hurt on it um, probably every um, third or fourth ride sort of thing all right guys um, hope that helps and um, yeah subscribe to my videos if you can I'm just trying to build my channel at the moment cheers see ya